Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the United Kingdom and I'm broadcasting into your homes, onto your phones, on into your space and I just want to thank you for passing by and listening to what I have to say. Today, what I'm going to say, I had to ask myself, why am I sharing this information? I have to kind of think when people ask me or send me stuff, I kind of think what value is it adding? How can it make someone else's life better? What use does it have? In this particular situation, I feel the use that it has is that you should really start thinking about who you're with, your family, and start appreciating them. I think the reason why I need to tell you about what I am going to tell you about is for the sole purpose that people who you have in your life that you're quibbling with, arguing with, or whatever it is you're doing, you need to stop it. Now, bearing that background in mind, I'm going to tell you what I've decided to tell you. Um, I was watching the US briefing, as I do, as you know I do, I watch it daily with Donald Trump. And there was a few things in there that alarmed me. I'm not sure if they alarmed me because of the inconsistencies or because of my instincts. I'm not even I'm not even saying my instincts are always correct, but I'll just share with you what I'm going to share with you from my notes. OK, so despite they was talking about the areas and they were saying, despite most areas being stable, the US is preparing for a flare up. And they're deploying equipment in critical areas. Now, I'm not sure whether the flare up is because they're planning to open up America phase one. They're planning to for everybody to start integrating and hoping to get this herd immunity where those who survive it, survive it. And those who don't die, I'm not quite sure if that is the reason for the flare up. But that wasn't my concern. 528 military personnel are being deployed across 24 hospitals. 7,000 National Guards on duty and 9,500 ventilators on hand. I just think that sounds a bit extreme for a country that is meant to be stabilising, where a lot of areas are now stable. So this kind of measure I found a bit unsettling. So vulnerable will be under surveillance and monitored. Nursing homes, families are going to be informed for transparency, whether there's COVID-19 in the nursing home. And FEMA is on standby to take over, apparently. Um, I'll tell you what FEMA stands for in a moment. So when Donald Trump declared national emergency, he reneged his presidency. I'm not sure if he knew that, and I'm not sure if you knew that. So if and when FEMA takes over, it is even more important to put aside petty differences, pull together as a family. Now more than ever, the importance of unity is paramount Families could get divided. And what do you want your last memory to be of your loved one? It sounds a bit, um, sounds a bit morbid. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. FEMA stands for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The moment that Donald Trump declared a national emergency, FEMA took over. He actually steps back as President of the United States and FEMA then takes over. So what does it mean under the National Executive Emergency Order? I'll tell you what the potential of what it could be. Not what it is, not what it will be, but the potential, or should I say the worst case scenario. So the potential is that Donald Trump steps back as president 
I don't think that's his plan. Otherwise, he wouldn't have he wouldn't be campaigning um, so fervently. But that is what would happen if FEMA takes over. Surveillance of US citizens would be increased. Freedom of movement would be restricted. Large groups of civilians can be isolated. All borders can be sealed, so there'll be no escape out of the country. Airspace and ports of entry can be controlled by FEMA. All modes of transportation, highways, seaports will be controlled by the government. All forms of media can be seized. Electrical, power, gas, petroleum, fuel, minerals, food, resources and farms can all be seized and controlled. Civilians can be mobilised into work brigades under government supervision. Sounds a bit like slavery to me. Health and education and welfare functions can be taken over by FEMA. The Postmaster General can be designated to operate a national register of everyone in the country. The airport aircrafts, including commercial, can be taken over. The Housing and Finance, Finance Authority can relocate communities, build new houses with public funds, and designate areas to, to be abandoned and establish new locations for the population. So they could take, say, a section out of Texas and say, OK, you're not going to live here anymore. We need this land. The whole of you need to get out and go somewhere else. We're evacuating you and taking you somewhere else. Now, I, I saw something today. I don't know how true it is that Texas is being evacuated. I'm not quite sure why. But that's what I heard. And that could, but the thing is, it's not, at the moment, the, um, if FEMA is in control, it's not obvious at the moment. So I'm not quite sure what quite is happening. I'm not quite sure if these are innuendos. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's actually happened. I don't know if it's automatic that when there's a national emergency that FEMA takes over. I'm not sure. I'm just telling you the worst case scenario so that you learn to appreciate the one that you're with. And you spend time with them, quality time, and stop picking up on petty stuff and being stupid. Because if the shit hits the fan, you're going to regret those last moments that you spent with somebody and you're going to wish that you'd spent a better time. So what else is there? Um, FEMA can take over railroads, inland waterways, public storage. They can also, the Office of Emergency Planning can give authorization for all of these executive orders to be put in effect in times of increased international tensions and economic financial crisis like what we're feeling now, we're feeling those tensions. Not internationally, but we are feeling the tensions in America. We're feeling some tensions in the UK. All aliens can be controlled. Penal and correctional institutions, and it's, uh, pe uh, sorry, all aliens, penal institutions, and correctional institutions can be controlled. Now, we can go about blaming COVID-19, we can blame Trump, we can blame a lot of people about what is in the offing, what seems to be happening, what seems to be creeping in. But really and truly, we can't really blame anyone. We can blame ourselves for not listening to people when they were talking, for keeping our eyes shut and our oh, eyes shut and ears closed, thinking, OK, this could never happen. This won't happen. This is not going to happen. We can do all of those things. It's not going to make any, it's not going to make one bit of difference. The only difference you can make and the only control you have is over yourself and over your family. Trying to keep yourself safe, trying to keep yourself happy and making your memories happy. People that you're with, the people that you care for, 
making sure your moments with them are memorable. So God forbid you, you know, you are shipped off here or somebody takes you there or you're told to go here or you're told to go there. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We just do not know. This this kind of situation is so unprecedented. And then you're thinking in the 20th, 20th century, how can something like this happen? How can we be taken over by the army and be in some kind of really weird, surreal situation? It seems really hard to believe in the 20th century. So... I don't know if it's happening. I don't know if it's not going to happen. I don't know what's happening. All I know is that this is what appears to be happening or what is rumoured to be happening. I don't have no categorical proof. But all I'm saying that the only reason I can think to share it with you is because I was trying to think, is it important for me to share it? And then I was trying to think, why is it important to share it? And I could only think of the word love. Love the one you're with. These times, we do not know what's happening from one day or another. We do not know when we're going to miss someone. We don't know how long we've got with someone. And yeah, you can stick up your nose and you can have your arguments and you can be intolerant you can do all kind of stupidness, but it's not worth it. Not in these times. It's not worth it in any time, but in these times specifically. It's just not worth being antagonistic with those people closest to you when you're going to need them. You're going to all need to pull together as much as possible. So that's the only reason I can think that. I felt compelled to share it with you. Otherwise, I would just feel as though I'm the bearer of bad news or I'm just giving information for the hell of it. I'm just giving you information because um, to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm fear-mongering. And I don't want to be accused for any of those things. I, don't, I really don't. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it there for now. Bye-bye.